Hey everyone, thanks for joining us and a warm welcome to this debut episode of The Journey Forward here on the Success Radio USA Network. I am your chef, your co-pilot, I am your host, Steve Rockwell. And it will be my great pleasure to bring interesting guests to the show to tell their stories of conquest and struggles as they journey along their path. My hope is that uh, we can find some commonality and take something of value to incorporate into our own journey forward. Folks, before we get started with our guest today, allow me to run through some of the many ways that you can connect with us and listen to the show. First of all, all of us here at the Success Radio USA Network hope that you will bookmark our website by going to successradio.us and bookmarking that. There you can see all the shows that the network hosts and you can listen to the live stream. You can also listen to us on TuneIn Radio by going to TuneIn.com or the TuneIn Radio app and searching for Success Radio USA. There you will see the whole lineup of shows and you can click on our show, The Journey Forward, where you can listen to the uh, new show on demand or any of the archive shows on demand. You can also listen to us on SoundCloud and Stitcher by searching for The uh, Journey Forward. And also, we hope that you will join along with us uh, in liking our Facebook page at Facebook forward slash The Journey Forward. Facebook forward slash The Journey Forward. And if you'll like that page, you will receive updates and show information as we move along. Well, listen, it is very exciting for me to introduce our guest for the day because they have graciously and generously provided the music for this show, that music that you heard in our roll-in and the music that you will hear on our rollouts, is the work of Heston, which is a Southern California-based rock band. Uh, Heston performs all original material in top clubs throughout Southern California. They are the winners of the Ernie Ball Battle of the Bands. They've performed on the Warp Tour. They've got several projects out on uh, CD and EPs. Let me introduce you to Ethan Pachilli, lead singer of the band, and Chris Peterson, lead guitarist. Guys, thank you so much and welcome to the show. Thanks for having us, Steve. Hey, it's good to be here. Absolutely, absolutely. It's um, one thing I should also say is that uh, these guys have graciously and with with much appreciation on our part, uh, graciously uh, provided the music for the the roll ins and the roll outs of the show and during commercial breaks. So that music that you hear coming into the journey forward will be Heston, and going out will be Heston. And um, boy, I, I tell you, I I can't think of um, better guests to start us off in this area, which I hope will be many shows to come. Uh, guys, this show is really about uh, uh, successes and failure that comes up along the way. It's about the tears and the triumphs. It's about the trials and errors, uh, as well as the successes. And uh, you guys uh, have really, as a band, started off on uh, an extremely high note. Let's go over some of those highlights real quick um the ernie ball battle of the bands you guys won that um tell us tell us about that that was actually uh that competition was the first time we had gotten together to play in a live setting we actually put ourselves through some pretty rigorous practice sessions for almost a year uh getting our sound dialed in and really getting to know each other before we played but uh we joined into that competition and um we really put on a good show for everybody and uh we ended up coming out on top so it was kind of an interesting experience to start our uh live performances (laughs) yeah the the preliminary show started at a local like dive club in anaheim and i remember uh thinking that the finals were were going to be at house of blues in uh in anaheim and so we worked through uh, i think four different shows before we got to our finals and then uh, ended up playing the finals and remember standing on the stage as uh, they announced the winners and just kind of like in shock as, as they, they, uh, the judges, uh, had decided that we were, you know, uh, of significant quality, I guess, to go on to the warp tour. That was awesome. Yeah. We all needed new shorts. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and yeah, uh, Chris, you mentioned, uh, that led to the warp tour. Explain now, let me say this, uh, 
I, I was just happy I'd heard of the Warp Tour, you know. Uh, but um, uh, but that's a big deal uh, for those of uh, uh, for those people that are around my age that might not know a whole lot about that tour. Uh, explain what that tour is and how significant that was for you guys. I mean, we're talking about a tour that you know has been around for a long time and has. Uh, involved a lot of different genres, mainly rock, but a lot of different subgenres within rock and roll. Initially established as a punk movement, you know, with, with uh, Blink-182 headlining a lot of the uh, original Warp tours, um, but it's, it's significantly changed since then. Yeah. Um, and so we, we were on with a lot of different uh, big bands, uh, including... Um, Asking Alexandria and uh, taking, not taking back Sunday. What's the other, the really huge one with uh, so yeah. as I lay dying. Um, uh, Some significant musicians. I mean, j- j- first of all, just to just to win the battle of the bands. Um, you had to go through some phenomenal people. I mean, you're talking about Southern California, kind of the mecca, uh, uh, as some might say, of broken dreams, but, but certainly a place where people go to be discovered and, and, uh, and, and try and put their dreams on the line. So, you know, you guys must, must have been doing something right um, to do that. Um, that also led, besides the, and first of all, how, what, what did it feel like to play on that tour? It was kind of surreal. Um, when you start setting up equipment at a tour such as that, uh, people kind of pay attention and they wonder who you are. Um, at that point we hadn't had too much outside exposure. So it was, uh, it was definitely an overload for us. We were, uh, full of anticipation and, and quite a bit of adrenaline once we played, but being able to have people walk by our stage and stop and turn and come and listen to us when uh, our music didn't necessarily fit in with that um, that heavy metal vibe that was coming from the rest of the stages. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it, it also led to some significant venues that you guys played at. And when I say significant, I'm talking about historically significant venues. Um, what were some of those venues that you guys then uh, got signed to play at? Well, uh, we pretty much hit all the famous ones on Sunset Strip, including uh, House of Blue Sunset, uh, Whiskey A Go Go, um, Troubadour, The Roxy, Viper Room. Um, you know, so we we had the uh, the pleasure and the opportunity of just you know being on the same stages that a lot of these famous acts, such as Rolling Stones, Van Halen, The Beatles, and others have. Uh, been able to go and, and perform at as well and, and kind of share that same environment, ambiance, and just uh, really learn a lot from that experience. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was an awesome, it was an awesome time. Tell us, uh, kind of give us a timeline a little bit about when this was all happening. Take us back to when and how the band formed and then uh, what the timeline for all of this activity is. Because, Ethan, I think you said, uh, and this, is, this blows my mind, that uh, this, this whole Battle of the Bands thing was really your first exposure or your first uh, uh, onstage experience with the band. But tell us, go back and give us uh, uh, an idea of when and how the band formed sure um the band formed uh my freshman year at uh college in southern california and uh it turns out all four of us are music students um heavily involved in uh, a lot of classical uh symphonietas and some jazz groups but uh i actually met the bass player in my first week in orientation and i saw he had a a treyu t-shirt on and I go up to him and I say, hey, man, uh, you like a Treyu? Me too. And he kind of brushed me off. And I told him or I asked him if he, he played an instrument and he did. And uh, so I asked him if he wanted to play together sometime and he totally brushed me off. And we kind of didn't like each other at first. And then months later, we became friends and um, we did play together and, and noticed that we were making some some cool sounds. And so we we brought two more guys from the music department that we knew pretty well into the fold and 
after that, we spent about a year uh, perfecting the way we wanted to sound and making sure that we had something to offer uh, when we did get to a live setting. Um, that was the goal. Yeah, yeah. And so then Battle of the Bands came along, what, about a year after that formation? Yeah, one of the band members had brought an opportunity to the table uh, and said, you know, there's this local showcase and it turns out to be a battle all the way uh, that finishes at Warp Tour as the grand prize. And so, you know, thinking nothing of really the battle, we didn't really expect to win the first preliminary round. We just actually wanted to play a show together uh, as it was supposed to be our first show. Uh, and so uh, one thing led to another, and, and we, we won that first prelim round and said, well, hey, maybe we have a shot at this, you know. It was cool to see the support from some of our classmates in college. They had kind of pegged us for those guys that would just take up the practice room and play really loud into the wee hours of the morning. Um, but once we started advancing, we actually got a, a quite a bit of support um, from yeah. our peers. Yeah, you guys really do have um, have a pretty loyal fan base. Actually, um, I always tell people, uh, you know, and if if you're not from Southern California, of course, um, it's it's likely you haven't heard of Heston. And I always tell people Heston's probably the best band out there that you've never heard of. Well, that's awesome, Steve. We we appreciate that. Um, we always try to bring our A game. Um, so. Uh, if we have the opportunity to, to be heard by anybody and um, them to have that feeling, that's that's a humbling experience. Yeah, well, um, yeah, you guys are, are definitely gifted in that area. And we'll, we'll talk more about that when we come back. We're going to have to take a break here. But um, when we come back, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll touch on some of the projects, uh, recording projects that you guys uh, have going on and uh, how people can listen to you and um, – You know, and just talking about some of the things that you guys were doing right to contribute to that success early on. Uh, But right now, let's uh, let's take a listen to who our sponsors are, and we'll be right back. Brina, how is a car like a computer? I don't know how. If you don't do routine maintenance, they get gooped up and fail early. By performing routine maintenance, your system performance will be improved, keep it secure, and find issues while they were small. Well, Elk Creek Computers will perform routine maintenance on your computers for $99 per system. Call us at 719-576-4122 to schedule an appointment today. Melden from Empowering Eve, a show designed for women by women. Empowering Eve is a show that gives women a voice. We want you to know that you are not alone. This is a place where we can connect as women, share our stories, and begin to feel validated, important, and valued. We're going to be talking to and learning from some of the most successful women in business who are right here in our own backyard. Empowering Eve is a show where we can learn together, grow together, and where you can start becoming the strong, confident, empowered woman you have always desired to be. Connect with us on Empowering Eve, a social impact community of strong, professional women. Empowering Eve, join the journey. Success Radio USA at successradio.us. Success Radio USA is your source for inspirational, motivational, informative, and life changing daily content. Thank you for listening. So. 
success real USA. to the journey forward this is your host steve rockwell we are here with uh, a couple of the founding members of the band heston a southern california based rock band out of orange county um who have uh, quite uh, quite a resume in in their first few years of formation um we hope that uh, you will uh, find us uh, on any number of sites, including successradio.us, uh, as well as um, Stitcher and SoundCloud and TuneIn.com, you know, where you can listen to uh, archive shows as well. But, um, guys, we were, we were talking about some of the things that you guys have done in, in terms of performance-wise, but uh, let's make sure we talk about some of your recording projects. Uh, take us through that, uh, uh, that th- uh, list of projects. I think you've got three different projects out. Yeah, we uh, released our first uh, uh, project uh, almost as... It's actually a. It was actually kind of a pun. We released it before our first full length al- album, as a, a chance to kind of get our listeners warmed up for what was to come. So we were sitting on these uh, acoustic tracks and uh, a, f- a couple full length tracks, uh, or, or a full sound tracks actually, uh, prior to our album release, and we released it and called it Appetizers because it was you know, what was to come. And, uh, you know, we kind of joke about that, but yeah, it turned out to be something cool to get our fans ready to listen to. Uh, and then later, um, we went into the studio to record, uh, derailed, which is our full length album that you can find out now, uh, on iTunes and SoundCloud, uh, as well as Spotify and the other listening, uh, uh, spectrums. Uh, but yeah, spent a week in the studio, recorded the whole album in a week with the exception of vocals, uh, and then began the mixing process to follow, which took about, I'd say like nine months, right? It took Just a good, about. We, uh, we had the opportunity to record in a home studio in San Diego, in, in Chris's hometown. Um, and it was a really cool experience for us to, to be together for so long and really hash out what we wanted the album to sound like. Um, so we're pretty proud of that. That was a good learning experience for us. Um, for anybody that hasn't recorded before, the most important thing is just to get in and, and learn and do it and experience it. Um, so that, that big album was, was that turning point for us. Uh, and then the third one was just uh, another small EP with some newer material um, that we put out. Um, what summer was that, Chris? Um, 2014? I believe that was 2014. But uh, that was uh, uh, four songs that really showed the evolution of where we had come uh, from a musical standpoint. And, w- and what was that one called? That one was uh, called American Love. That debuted our single, American Love, which uh, is one of our most popular songs at this time. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, guys... um you know, go out and 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 take a listen to that um, discology. Derailed is their their um, full length, and then appetizers and American Love. I think you'll like what you hear, uh, and uh, that'll help you get to know these guys. Um, not only their music, but uh, get a sense of who they are. And um, uh, was there ever a sense during that? period that uh you know you guys were experiencing the success you were guys were winning the the contest and performing on the warp tour was there ever a sense during that period that you know hey maybe we turned a corner and we're really on our way now i think that's a that's a hard question to look back and and put ourselves in those shoes um we're so driven by the things that we are able to create together and uh, the new material that we make that sometimes we just put our head down and and 
uh, get to work and forget to stop and look at some of the things that we've done. But when we did play those um, those venues and, and Warp Tour, there was a moment where uh, we saw the distance that we had come since we started putting in the work, and we knew that the, the year that we had taken to develop our sound was worthwhile. Uh, and we did enjoy that uh, mountaintop experience for for a little while during the project and that fueled some of our activity at the time sure sure and you you guys uh, and this you hear this a lot from the uh folks that uh that know music you guys really technically are very sound very very good musicians i mean this isn't just you, you've got a song or two that people follow or, or or love you you guys are are really technically very sound musicians and you hear that a lot don't you i i think we enjoy the fact that we get to put that much time in the into the technicality of it um one of the beauty one of the beautiful things that uh we're able to contribute through our music is that we're technically sound and yet we still incorporate that that brash um unadulterated rebellious nature that is rock and roll and it's still within the music within a technical context and i think that's one of our strengths sure sure spend a lot of time uh, like ethan said just kind of molding and creating you know the vision for the song um, and that that means that we we're not really satisfied if we're if it's not a part of the a part of the vision you know if it's if it's something that's creating a negative emotion or it's creating a um, well just the wrong sound in the wrong place you know we'll, we'll make sure we cut it out and and fulfill it with the things that move the song in a progression uh, that we like you know and comes is authentic really. Yeah, and and you guys are all original, right? You you're all your material is all original. You don't do covers. There may be a YouTube video of uh Kiss from a Rose <laughs> by Seal out there somewhere, but uh no, it is all original music. <laughs> yeah, and for the record, it's not in the band when they, when they did that. So. <laughs> where does where does your uh inspiration for your not only your song lyrics but where does your inspiration from your style and uh, your overall sound come from I guess for me I- instrumental wise um, I'm, I'm really shaped by uh, the roots that I grew up on uh, being influenced by Led Zeppelin uh, The Who um, you know the, a lot of the Beatles a lot of the classic rocks really great 60s and 70s music um, really shaped my listening spectrum, um, and elements of all that shows up in my music today. Since such as that old vintage tone, I love the sound of an old vintage tube amplifier, uh, and the sound of uh, a beautifully crafted electric guitar. Um, I, I use uh, I use PRS guitars, and I use um, uh, vintage uh, uh, Fender gear and. Um, I also use a, a boutique guitar called uh, by, by Tom Anderson, who's a great uh, guitar builder. Um, but you know, I, I love the sound of the old uh, of the old styles, and I like to incorporate that into my instrumental music. And uh, yeah, it, it really has shaped me today uh, in how I write riffs and how I uh, come up with progressions and that kind of thing. That combined with. Uh I, I consider Seattle home, and um, there's definitely in in the vocals and some of my rhythm guitar parts. You can hear that that grunge genre uh, come through quite a bit. So we're a good, healthy mix of um, some of the evolution of rock and roll in the last uh, century, you could say. You know? <laughs> certainly, certainly, and you, yeah, you're right, Ethan. You can you can hear that as well as. Uh, some of the classic style that Chris was talking about. Um, I sure hope folks uh, take a listen to that and 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 can can appreciate uh, those melding of uh, of styles and inspiration. Um, guys, in the uh, in those earlier formation years, what were the kinds of struggles you guys really uh, encountered? And and we've already kind of talked about the fact. 
that you jumped out of the gate right away and and um, and, and had a lot of success right off the bat. Um, kudos to you. That's that's very that's very unusual and very difficult to do. So uh, t- tremendous amount of respect for that. Uh, but following that success, what has been the the kinds of struggles that you guys have been encountering? Well, early on, our, our struggles probably were, um, like you said, we were shotgunned into some of the things we were doing, some of the shows we were playing, uh, learning uh, who to trust and who to believe and um, who to, to let come alongside our project was, was something that took time to develop. Um, it's easy to be guarded, um, and, and it's safe to be guarded. Uh, we did have to branch out a little bit and um, uh, just be and experience the industry for what it was with people that were at our at our stage. Um, and I think one of the struggles was um, knowing that we had something worthwhile to offer and knowing that it was uh, it was marketable and it was um, it was something that people would pay to. Um, appreciate yeah yeah um, we've got to take a break here uh, but when I come back let's let's talk about how you how you dealt with those struggles and um, uh, you know and, and and talk about what kinds of characteristics you guys had to have to to fight through some of that uh, some of that struggle and some of those downfalls so uh, folks let's uh, let's take another break let's listen to our sponsors and then we'll be back in just a moment Chuck Bader. And this is Jerry Evans, and you're invited to join us on Profiles of Success, where we feature stories of successful businesses and successful individuals. You can find us on TuneIn Radio, SoundCloud, or Stitcher by searching Success Radio USA, or go to our website at successradio.us. Our current program is available every day, 2 p.m. Mountain Time, Monday through Friday. We air new programs on every Monday. These are programs which are designed to guide you along your path of success, to provide you with the information, the inspiration, and the motivation to achieve your goals. Right here on Profiles of Success on Success Radio USA. It gives clarity to problem solving. It increases production and focus on the job. It alleviates sleepless and restless nights and fends off stress and tension headaches. No, it's not the latest energy drink or health supplement. It's Legal Shield. Get peace of mind every day, every night, now and forever. Legal Shield. Get it. To find out more about Legal Shield and how it can protect your family and your business, call Andrea at area code 719-243-3174. That's area code 719-243-3174. Legal Shield. Did you know the highest level of brand awareness is top of mind awareness? Top of mind brand awareness is when a customer needs to make a purchase within your product category and they think of you first. Top of mind brand awareness is built through repeated exposure and consistent brand delivery. Tying your brand to one of our internet shows or one of our internet radio networks can expose your brand to hundreds of people every day. Think of how top of mind brand awareness can give you a huge advantage in the market when a customer is ready to buy and your brand immediately comes to mind first. It's affordable, consistent longevity that can reach your exact demographic locally or nationally. Call today, 719-243-3172. That's 719-243-3172. 
journey forward thanks for coming back thanks for listening to our sponsors uh, those are the folks who help us uh, stay on the air and so um, I want you to know who those folks are that music that you heard as we came back in from the break is the band Heston uh, and that's who I have on the show today uh, let me give you a quick housekeeping uh uh, announcement here. Uh, you're listening to The Journey Forward. My name is Steve Rockwell. I'm your host, and I will be your host uh, for hopefully 100 more shows each and every week. Uh, we here at uh, Success Radio Network uh, appreciate you cho- choosing Success Radio USA, and you can bookmark that station and that website by going to successradio.us. Uh, The Journey Forward can be found on a number of different listening um, venues, including TuneIn Radio, uh, whether it's the app or the website, TuneIn.com. Success Radio USA is the search you make, and then you'll find all the shows, and we are The Journey Forward. You can listen to us on live stream or on demand, because we do archive our shows there. And you can also find our show on SoundCloud, uh, as well as Stitcher, by searching for The Journey Forward. And you can follow us on Facebook by searching for The Journey Forward there. And finally, if you are so inclined, drop us a line. I hope you are inclined to do so. Uh, Drop us a line at thejourneyforward at successradio.us. Guys, we we, uh, went into break talking about some of the struggles that... um, that you guys have encountered so far uh, dealing with trust issues as, as to who to, to, to let near and, and into the band uh, as far as, uh, I think, Ethan, you were kind of referring to as far as the people who, who wanted to to work with you in some way, shape, or form. Uh, and maybe you can talk a little bit more about that. But also, how, uh, how do you deal with those struggles? What, uh, what are the ways that you guys uh, dealt with it, good or bad, and then what did you learn from it? I think the the beauty of having those struggles of not being sure who to let close to the project really brought us closer together as a unit and as a family uh, within our band. Um, we knew we could trust each other, and we knew that we could trust the music, and we really dedicated ourselves to that 100%. For better or for worse, we, we plowed ahead doing the things that we knew we did well, uh, and trying to take all of our opportunities and our our accolades with a grain of salt, um, just because if you ever get to a point where you think that you've you've done enough, uh, then you'll never do more. Uh, and we didn't want to get to that point, and we still don't. Yeah, and uh, Chris, what uh, talk a little bit about? Um, well, first of all, I guess uh, talk about. The how important it is that that the band members trust each other. What's how does chemistry play into you guys' success? I'm glad you brought that up because um, you know not everybody is meant to be in a relationship with everybody. You know, and the people that recognize how to work with one another really are the ones that end up doing something uh, great because they can collaborate. Uh, and the difference we talk about the difference between compromising and collaborating well compromising is is still each party giving up something Um, and that I'm proud to say that 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 doesn't really happen in our writing process where it is truly a collaboration Uh, one person adds and the other person adds and collaborates together and you end up with a product that both are satisfied Um, chemistry between each member is so critically important um, I, I remember as we used to start out, there was a lot more uh, shouting and screaming because we weren't uh, we weren't jamming together. And we hate to use that word because we're not jamming, we're practicing, but we're, we're literally meaning, you know, we're jiving together, you know. 
on a personal level. Um, and now it's com- turned out to be something where we know each other so well that uh, one of us can take something and we know that uh, the other person is speaking out of love and truth. Um, and at the heart of it is really the collaboration to make something better, make something uh, inevitably come to fruition in, in its original purpose. So uh, if, you, if you're in an ensemble with, with, if you're a musician out there and you're listening to this and you're in an ensemble with somebody who you always butt heads with, uh, deep down you know that that's, you know, it's not really healthy. <laughs> Um, but, uh, but yeah, different circumstances lead to, to different places, you know, uh, thinking of the movie Whiplash, which comes to mind if you've ever seen that movie where the, yeah. the professor is just this hard nosed dude and he, he, he won't let certain things go and the student ends up being the one who suffers, you know, so. Sure. Sure. Yeah. What, um, and you guys have had some turnover in the band. Uh, you guys have been together for, uh, well, what has it been, nine years now? Is that is that what you guys were telling me? It's been about nine yeah, years? Yeah, it's been about nine years for us. Um, there was actually a brief period where uh, Chris wasn't our guitar player. Um, awesome story. <laughs> we, we actually, um, we decided in our youth and... Uh, whatever wisdom we thought we had that that we needed to go in a different direction and i think uh, fate has a way of um doing exactly what it's supposed to do uh we were without chris for a little while um that's a nice way of saying he sucked and then he had to get better <laughs> chris chris has always been a really talented guitar player he just wasn't necessarily the same flavor that we were at the time uh, and we took a, uh, a break from each other. And when Chris returned, um, my mind was blown. He was just tapping into some musical territory that didn't exist before um, within himself or, or within us. And uh, it was just so cool to see how we had grown in that brief period apart and come back together. Um, it's a funny story now, and I'm glad it is because... Uh, <laughs> it's guitar puberty. Yeah, <laughs> guitar it, puberty. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you and the girl just have to break up before you realize that you're supposed to be together. So, and they're the girl. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that's crazy because uh, you know I I uh, I didn't know you guys then, but it's it's crazy to think about that now. In fact, I didn't even know that story really, um, because you're so good that it's hard to imagine that there was a time where you guys said, ah, oh, we don't need each other. So that, that's just, that's just kind of crazy to me. But, um, what well, goes back to that original chemistry thing that you're talking about. We hadn't really spent a lot of time in the relationship seat. So all we really knew each other by was our sound and was our licks. And, you know, um, when when it ended up happening, it was it wasn't a completely necessary thing to happen. It didn't really feel like it, um, but it really provided time for me to grow on my own. Um, I, and they may not even I may have never told this to them, but man, I was so jealous. I was just pissed, angry, jealous. Um, but it made me want to get better. And I think that had that not happened, I wouldn't have been striving for excellence, you know, and perfection. Obviously you never achieve perfection, but if you strive for perfection, you get excellence. And I think that's something, that's a lesson that every musician should take to heart is when you really try to achieve your absolute best, uh, you end up with, uh, you end up with, with good, good music, you know, well, not just musicians. I mean, that's uh, that's a good lesson for all of our listeners, regard, re- regardless of <clears throat> regardless of what their what their path on is on, in life. You know what their what their um, uh, goals and aspirations are. That's that's just really good. Uh, good not only advice but it's good to know that a band uh it's good to know that that folks who who are so good at what they do have to also go through that process that's that's a tough process and you talk about it being a funny story now but when you're in the middle of that as you said chris uh you don't know that that's going to end up being a funny story 
Oh, and it certainly wasn't at the time. I think the, the turning point and one of the biggest milestones of the band was uh, Chris forgiving the way that um, the way that we asked him to leave and coming back and being a part of it. We had our our, uh, our relationship and our emotion together in the practice room was was visceral at that point. We could we could feel uh, that something had changed. I laugh because they they invited me into our practice space and they had the lights off and they were all just sitting in a circle and they were they were like here take this shot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like cool man. We we, I love did Jameson. Not, we did not have alcoholic beverages uh, on on our campus. <laughs> it was a wet campus at the time. Uh, that's the official statement of Heston. They did not have okay. alcohol on campus. I plead the fifth. Uh, right. So was there ever a time uh, that you guys felt like giving up? Is, was, was there ever a time where it just wasn't working for you uh, for whatever reason and you just felt like this is, this is not worth it and, and we should give up? So an interesting twist. Um, in hearing you say that, I don't think that we ever came to uh, – that stage where we were like, I feel like giving up uh, our music because that's so precious to us. But there was definitely and still is this tainted fog of giving up on the music industry itself. Um, there, there are so much, uh, there's so many things that uh, a musician can walk into and kind of be blindsided um, that it doesn't even have anything to do with your art. You know, it doesn't have anything to do with your your sound uh, uh, in the music industry. Um, but but yeah, definitely a time when we're like, man, you know, there's just not a lot of outlet here. Um, but never, I would say, I mean, I, Ethan maybe can back me up on this, but never a time when I felt like giving up on the art itself. Um, that's always been. Uh, and still remains today coming from a real place within me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I think it would be wrong to say that when, even when you first start a project like this, like a musical group or, or an acting career or, or anything. Um, and I speak mostly from knowledge of what happens in Southern California, but I think it would be wrong not to say that there's always that inherent. What if we fail? Um, and I think it's important to define failure uh, to yourself. And um, what we take pride in is that we love what we do. We love the music that we create. And if people come up to us and say that, hey, you, you changed my perspective with that song or, heck, I just love listening to you guys, that's an added bonus. Uh, I think we really, we really take our success um, to mean that we've – found people that we can do some pretty incredible things with and we're just doing as much as we can and taking it as far as we can go together uh, and there's a lot of strength in that well that, that that's that's incredible and it's it's going to be fun to uh, go into this last segment together and and talk about what failure means and and what obstacles are and and what you're most proud of so let's take a break let's let our sponsors have a couple of words and then we'll come back and and uh, approach some of those questions thanks guys we'll be right back Success Radio USA at successradio.us. Success Radio USA is committed to helping you achieve a positive daily approach to your success each and every day. Thank you for listening. Success Radio USA.
to uh, to the show. You are listening to The Journey Forward. I'm your host, Steve Rockwell. We are here with the band, with two of the members, the founding members of the band, Heston. We are here with Ethan, Ethan Pacilli and Chris Peterson. Uh, we were just introducing the topic, actually. We kind of rolled our, our conversation around to uh, talking about... Um, well, really, some hard stuff when you when you have to confront it, and and we uh, uh, let's define the word failure as far as what it might mean to you guys. What is? Tell me what that means. I think there was uh, a perfect way that we were indicated. Uh, we we were shown what failure looked like. Um, we we've been involved in probably four different music competitions, and I think the last one that we were really involved in. Um, we had, we had some prior success in those, which was great. But the last one we were involved in was something that was a bit of a shot in the dark for us. Um, kind of like just having a loaded shotgun, putting a blindfold on and spinning around and seeing what you hit. This was kind of, uh, just, just different for us. We decided to sign up to audition for America's Got Talent, um, when they were here in LA and it was something different for us and something that we were uncomfortable doing strictly for the reason that we've always been about doing the groundwork and the hard work and playing the shows and gaining the followers. We decided to do something that everyone else was kind of doing. Um, and we put ourselves out there and for quite a few different reasons, we had a very exciting and a very draining day uh when we went to do this audition maybe maybe chris wants to dig into some of that yeah um their their whole agenda seemed to be um you know obviously making reality television that was staged (laughs) um and so we were marched around the whole grounds of uh i forget the name of the hotel belvedere or something some old historic hotel down in uh, downtown LA and they would march us around this, this property and out into the, you know, the center garden place. Um, and by the time we actually performed, I mean, we were, we were just like kind of worn out carrying our gear around with us and, you know, cameras were, were all over us and then they were, you know, non-attentive and then they were all over us and, you know, really to ramp up your energy, which was, which was cool. Um, but it just, you know, by the time we actually got to perform, um, you know, we were, we were a little bit more drained. And, and what was interesting is when we got through that round and they said, you know, we got to put you in front of our, our next set of uh, producers. Um, and then they made us, you know, kind of wait for another four hours. And, well, you know how television goes. It's you don't really you can't really put a pin on it. It's kind of unexpected. But. And if I could finish this off, we uh, I think we made it through two rounds. And at that point, it had become apparent that um, the, the initial judges knew that we at least had something that was worth keeping around. Um, and I think we appreciated that. But to get to the uh, an original question about failure, when we got put through to the last set of judges, uh, there was zero interest. Um, and it became apparent that Though we were good and we were talented, uh, it was they didn't want a rock band in that setting. And so we saw two different definitions of failure. Um, personally, we didn't think we failed because we're still doing what we love. It was just maybe fell on deaf ears. Um, but their definition of failure was, hey, you're you're okay, but you're just not good enough. And I think that's a dangerous place to be mentally for some people starting projects sure sure well uh, you know on that note then uh and and you know it's kind of cool that you guys were able to uh be heady enough to to really help define that for you in that moment um so where does your encouragement come from where do you guys where do you guys find your strength and, and encouragement coming from well, uh, personally, uh, I'm a devout Christian, and so I, I spent a lot of my time in the Word, and I spent a lot of time uh, connecting my relationship with uh, with Christ and Him crucified. Uh, and so my encouragement, you know, uh, comes from 
uh, how God has, has been a part of my life and led me through this whole process. Uh, not something that I like to hide, but I like to put that out for everybody to see um, because I, I believe that the gifts that I, I've been given and Ethan has been given, you know, are, are from above. And uh, it's this is our way of not burying that into the ground, but rather, you know, kind of letting the world see, hey, you know, uh, we've been we've been given this awesome opportunity to <laughs> go there for and rock, my friend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and and um, the four of us are uh, we were music students at a, a private Christian university in Southern California, and um, something that we're all very active in is uh, worship music, and I think that's something that pulls us all together, and we understand, um, but having that that Christian background and mentality about things reminds us every day that no matter how talented we are, those things are gifts and uh, we're only stewards of the gifts that we've been given. Um, So our job is to use those to the best of our abilities. And I think collectively as a group within our genre, we've, we've tried to express stewardship of rock and roll uh, and I think there's some there's been some empty seats at the table uh, within that genre, and and we'd like to see that change. Yeah, awesome. What uh, what are you most proud of? Personally, um, I'm most proud of staying in Southern California. Um, I'm not originally from here, and sometimes the lifestyle in this area can be very draining. Um, very fast paced everyone's active and doing very important things and um, it's it was very important to me that I was with this group and with these guys because we were the things that we create together are in my opinion otherworldly I, I they fill me up and uh, express certain things in ways that I could never do on my own so I'm most proud of the sacrifice that is worth making to do the things that we love together and Chris what what is what is your why and how strong is it and by that I mean why do you want it and is is uh, is it strong enough well um you know, I, 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 well, let me first back up to what Ethan was saying is, um, you know, I, I'm really proud of, I, di- I didn't know we could write music that I like. <laughs> 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 I didn't ever knew that was a possibility. Um, and so I guess to hear, to hear yourself, you know, uh, on the big screen of sound, if you will, uh, is, is a really cool, it's just a really cool feeling. Um, and to put all that time, energy, resources, and money into your work, I mean, it really is is come to fruition in uh, in itself. Um, I'm really proud of the music. I guess is what I'm, what I'm trying to say is I, I love love listening to the music. Um, but to back up to your question, uh, kind of unpack what you mean by why. Um, a little bit more for us here. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, uh, you're involved in something that's highly competitive. You're involved in in an industry that uh, throws away far more people than they keep, right? Um, and so, you know, what is your down in your gut, deep in your heart, why you you want this? What what is that driving force for you? I think ultimately, I, I just want to keep doing what I'm doing and writing music. Uh, we talk about the word legacy, um, and so f- for you to be able to hand off your art to the next generation or uh, the next group of people who would see it fit, I think ultimately is is one of the driving factors in this uh, to never plateau as a musician, but to constantly be just releasing stuff that comes from within you um, is, is, is an amazing and awesome opportunity. Um, I, it's talking as we use the word, make it, I, I wouldn't necessarily as, uh, ascribe us and our um, intentions as achieving that uh, type of verbiage. Um, because in in my mind, I've already made it. I'm, I'm releasing music uh, and I'm writing music. Um, you know, the last and final step, 
you know, would, would to be ultimately to support myself in just doing that, you know, both Ethan and I have full-time jobs, um, on the side. And so I'd love to do what I do more, um, and be able to support myself. Um, but, but yeah, I, I, I really do, uh, feel that, uh, I'm doing what I love and therefore, uh, I'm passionate about it. Uh, so it's, that's, what's really driving my core value of why. Okay. All right. Um, 30 seconds from each of you on knowing what you know now and, and having been in the grind for nine years now. If you were starting over today, well, what would you see yourself doing differently? 30 seconds from each of you. I think uh, personally, if, if I could do anything different, it would just be to fan the flames of the relationships that you have. Um, and knowing who is worth sinking your time into, um, and, and just pouring your heart into those people and the efforts that you can do together, um, is everything. You'll look back on the work that you've seen and, and really appreciate it for what it was. And you'll watch yourself grow through your own history, your own recorded history, um, and it's it's just such a cool cool experience to be able to we've grown up musically together and I, I think that's really special when people have that opportunity Chris uh, yeah absolutely back up what Ethan was saying you know there's going to be people that, that pull you forward and there's going to be people that pull you backwards um, and it's absolutely critical that you invest in the people that are going to pull you forwards um, and continually you know, make you better in every way, not just musically, you know. Um, And there was a lot of people along the way that really did that for us. And then there was the other people who we just had to cut ties with uh, because they're just going to suck you dry, you know. So you have to you have to pay attention to to the relationships. But I mean, we think about think about life and how you you you, uh, you know, uh, reach success. And it's through your, your colleagues and the people that can love and support you and uh, that you can speak into them and also allow them to speak into your life. You have to, to grab a hold of those relationships, uh, and make sure that they're strong. Gotcha. Wow. That's, that's, that's fantastic. Uh, uh, that you say that, and uh, I'm sure our listeners will will certainly uh, get a lot out of what you guys have shared with with us today, and and we appreciate it. Uh, but before we go, uh, where can we find your music, and where can people contact you? Uh, you can find our music on Spotify, on uh, SoundCloud, on iTunes. Uh, you can find videos of us on YouTube. Um, you can reach us at our email, which is heston.contact at gmail.com. Um, and don't be shy. Reach out to us. We'd love to answer any questions or or uh, maybe we can be of service to you somehow. Uh, maybe you, you have a gig you want us to play. You know, we'd love to come play it. <laughs> and I would highly recommend that. Guys, thank you so much. You have been a real blessing today, uh, not only to me uh, by providing uh, great conversation, great music uh, for our rollouts and roll-ins for this show, uh, which I can't thank you enough, uh, but also to our listeners who um, who can take a lot from what you've said today and incorporate it into their own journey. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for having us, Steve. Thanks, you Steve. bet. You bet. All right, folks. Uh, you've been listening to The Journey Forward with me, your host, Steve Rockwell. You can find us at Success Radio USA by going to successradio.com, or I'm sorry, .us. And uh, also go to our Facebook page and like us where uh, you will then get uh, all the latest show information, updates. Uh, you'll, we'll put some Heston stuff up there. You'll, you'll hear from... Uh, uh, are all of our guests that are coming up and you'll get a chance to know uh, uh, what is in store for you in the future. Guys, everybody, thanks a lot and have a great week.